6.30. I'm going to call the regular meeting of the Forest Lake, excuse me, Comfort Lake Forest Lake Watershed District to order. And the first item is uh, setting of the meeting agenda, and I do have a couple of uh, changes. Um, recommending that we move the minutes uh, down to the um, administrator report area, so it'll be part of A, let's call it A1. Okay. There are a couple of items that have to be discussed um, okay. from the manager Schmaltz oh. email. And I have just a couple of minor corrections. We can deal with those at that time, if that's agreeable. Okay. And then we also have a gentleman here for a permit number 18-028 uh, under 6B. And I'll just recommend that we change uh, AIS to B and permit uh, to A. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the agenda with the changes. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next is public open forum. And other than our permittee, uh, we have no other citizens present, so I will close that public forum. Uh, next is the Citizens Advisory Committee update. Jessica? The last meeting of the CAC was canceled, so there are no notes for that meeting. The next one will be next Tuesday. Thank you. Okay, now we are at permit number 18-028 for North Lakes Academy. Mike, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, Madam President, well, I'll just give it to Engineer Grasky. Okay. He did the review of the, uh, of the site. Um, Madam President and managers, um, in front of you, you have Permit 18-028, this is for North Lakes Academy. This is a new building and associated drive and parking. The site's located in Forest Lake, east of the intersection of 232nd Street and West Broadway Avenue. Um, you can see from the, the figure here, um, we have about a 15-acre site, and they're proposing a little over three acres of impervious um, the current site um, primarily drains from the south to the north, so from right to left in that figure that you're looking at there. Um, and the soils on the site are very, very sandy, and so under existing conditions, under most events, water flows um, to the north, to the wetlands, and then infiltrates. Um, under very large events, it would over top that wetland two on the far north end and go to a drainage swale that eventually makes its way over to the sunrise system. Um, for stormwater treatment, they're proposing swales along the driveway, a uh, small pretreatment basin kind of at the end of those swales and then a large infiltration basin. And that infiltration basin is designed to infiltrate in excess of the the two-year event. Um, that has provided calculations demonstrating no increase in rates or volumes leaving the site. And they've also provided a detailed um, erosion control plan, which includes your typical rock construction entrance, revegetation specifications. We'll point out that they are proposing put erosion control blankets along all of those swale areas. So that'll be good to button that site up. Um, so I'm recommending approval of the permit with the um, administrative items that are listed in the report one through five. And I'm happy to answer any questions if there's some. I have no questions. I don't have any. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to approve uh, permit application 18-028. Um, with, uh, with them following the recommendations on the permit, or the, the uh, recommendations of the engineer. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. It's easy when, uh, when the rules are followed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, next is the AIS update. Uh, 
Madam President, uh, managers, a um, couple items of note. Um, the um, <clears throat> we are uh, planning to try to ex execute uh, a treatment in for Moody next year, but we first have to get the concurrence from DNR based on some of the previous conditions for a curly pondweed there. Um, on the Comfort Lake um, sampling of nitrogen sediment sampling, so that's been conducted, the samples have been sent in, but we may not get those results for a couple, several months based on how busy the University of Minnesota Soils Lab is. <clears throat> According to Mr. Uh, McComas, the, typically the, the soil tests for farmers are sort of get front line for their planning purposes. So he's uh, saying that it's probably be sometime in the middle of the, of the winter, uh, first of the year or something. Uh, maybe the most interesting piece that we have on the update is for Shields Lake under the rough fish management. Um, on that particular one, so we executed a contract for uh, with CARP Solutions to complete three electrofishing surveys. Um, and these were conducted late August and early September. This was in addition to the work that the Minnesota DNR did on our behalf. They adjusted their schedule based off of the uh, planned work that we have both for the fish barrier and for the stormwater re uh, reuse, the stormwater harvest and reuse, and then also uh, for the anticipated alum treatment for next year. But the DNR fishery survey is different than this kind of fish survey. Um, so what was interesting was simply the, the amount of carp that, was in, that is in Shields Lake. I did talk to um, Dr. Peter Sorensen then uh, about the preliminary results, at least what we heard from CARP Solutions after they did their first day of work. They had indicated that they were finding these large carp in there. Um, and his suggestion was that, well, it was probably because the rote note treatment done 20 years ago really didn't work. Apparently, that even though they had drawn the lake down, um, I think even pumped out quite a bit of water and then did the treatment, that the carp were very successful and still hiding, <laughs> you know, burying themselves sufficiently to, to avoid the contact and then survived. So the, the additional items, the fish barrier and the aerator, probably were doing what they needed to do because all these are apparently large and then which would indicate older yeah. carp. So we are going to have a number of them age dated because the, um, they're, they're, there are rings that grow in their ears, uh, similar to like a tree ring. Mm -hmm. So each year they one more ring so we can, they can readily date the age of the carp. Um, but um, the one, one thing that was really surprising was just the, the sheer biomass of carp in the lake. Um, which they note is roughly 5.3 5 times the management threshold. So we are proposing to do a harvest on Shields Lake sometime this winter. Uh, we have completed and submitted a, uh, an application with the DNR for their uh, conservation partnership grant. Um, so we'll see how that, that comes out. That was submitted last Monday. Um, but we will also start communicating with the commercial fishermen to, um, uh, to see if we can't get them lined up. Mm -hmm. If they are not willing to do a harvest there, then uh, we can work with CARP Solutions on, a, on their techniques. Um, but we'll see, uh, you know, CARP are pretty smart. You know, once they start seeing maybe some of these get caught, they might not want to go into these traps. So having a commercial fisherman come in and net them would be really ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's gonna be what we'll pursue for this winter. Um, and then we would be ready for being able to do the Allen treatment. And then uh, another thing on, on shields, uh, I think about late 
course, we had a very late winter ice out this last year, so I think it was like the first, maybe April 3rd or so, I had asked uh, EUR to go do a dissolved oxygen reading on Shields Lake in addition to the work that we normally do on Moody Lake. And what it, we found was that there was sufficient uh, DO levels at 1.5 meters, but not any deeper. So there was an aerator out there, but it's really, it's a ladder type where it pumps the water up and then the, the water literally falls down like a ladder. It gets some oxygen in it and then it goes into the lake at the, sh basically at the shore interface. So it doesn't get very, the dissolved oxygen does not get very deep. So we may want to look at supplementing that because they have power and, and, and the city, of course, owns the park area. So all those things are in place for us. Um, uh, but we'll want to look at it a little bit more, more closely. We may want to just see if operating it longer would make any difference this year and then continue to monitor the dissolved oxygen. Um, I have some questions with the fisheries department for for DNR currently about this uh, proposal as far as supplementing the the aerator system out there. And then once we hear back, there's another um, grant cycle in November that we could potentially um, submit for uh, to do that work as well. So, um, so yeah, so it was good we had pursued this uh, contract with Carp Solutions because uh, we really did not know if there were carp out there. You know, <coughs> We don't get out there very often to physically take a look, and there is, you know, and, and really the only residents are the golf is the golf course. Hmm. So, an abundance of carp, huh? It'd sure, be nice if you can get that commercial fisherman out there. They did a they did a good job on Bone Lake and Moody. Yeah, and both of them. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Doctor Sorensen does some kind of electro um, kill as well in the winter. I've heard him talk about that at seminars I've been at with his team of um, master's students, which seems to be very effective. Are you, you said you were going to talk to him as well? I already did, and um, so that was a question. But because all the, all the research funds have now gone on to the Minnesota AIS Research Center, mm -hmm. he no longer has any funds for any research and has no graduate students to do any work. So um, wow. he did make a very clear suggestion that if we ever wanted to have any research done and wanted to fund it, he would be very open to that. Well, so. MOD's coming up, the MOD uh, convention, so maybe that's a good resolution that we, uh, that we propose at the meeting, that MOD fund it. Okay, anything else? Any questions from managers? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Watershed based funding grant agreement. And President and Managers, uh, you may recall at the beginning of the year, we, uh, well, it was last December, the um, Bowser Board had approved um, a recommendation from the legislature to. Um, issue funding for watershed-based funding for the metro region. And then what ensued was some discussion about how that funding would be distributed. And because of a variety of reasons, or uh, maybe lack of imagination, or whatever it is, or time, uh, maybe more so, was the fact that then we just went with the county boundaries and not watershed boundaries. So Washington County got an allocation of roughly 780000 and there are eight watershed management organizations, the SWCD and the county. So simplistically then what was decided amongst the, the group was to, for this round, um, to split it evenly by just basically divided by 10. So the Comfort Lake Forest Lake Watershed District has $78,760 for implementation of watershed management type activities. The preference is that it's in Washington County and also things that were already in our plan. So this is what the what we have recommended and submitted to Bowser. And uh, but we do have the need for an approved agreement since um, we are each responsible. Each entity is responsible for that same seven seventy eight thousand seven sixty.
And that is going into a general fund? Or are you, are you basing it on specific projects? Well, the what we've included was the implementation of the Forest Lake Diagnostic, as a part of the Forest Lake Diagnostic Implementation, and then also as a, um, under the line item of uh, the Washington Ju uh, Judicial Ditch 6 implementation. Okay, and does that total the 78,000, I guess is my, my question, are we? Well, I mean, we don't know what these projects will, in, mm -hmm. will entail in total, and we have the flexibility for the grant. For example, if one comes up and it's roughly a hundred thousand dollars, we could use all seventy-eight thousand seven hundred sixty toward the one. Mm -hmm. So there, um, and that was part of why we, in fact, um, wrote the proposal or submitted the the application uh, for the district here in such a manner to provide the flexibility within the Washington County area of what we would anticipate to be the next projects available to the district within the time frame of the grant. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 18-09-03. Well, I'll second. The, the only question I have uh, remaining is that we don't total up to that 78,000 in the resolution. And do we have a method or do we even need a method to dispose of that remainder since the resolution is very specific to these three projects? Hmm. Well, I guess it would be a matter that I mean, given th these areas, Castlewood, Hayward, and Washington Judicial District 6, we would anticipate that kind of given the historical element of what projects cost within the district, uh, that we would far surpass to some element the 78,760, so we would not anticipate there being an overage mm -hmm. or some remaining amount. Um, given the loads in particular that we're seeing out of, uh, particular out of Hayward and Washington Judicial District 6. I just want to make sure, you know, and that also that um, just because these projects are in Washington County um, and this funding is coming from Washington County, it's not stipulated that it has to only be funding for Washington County. That is it's correct. It's district-wide money that is being targeted right now for those projects. Okay, well, if we have to, if we have to do something later, we can, I guess, adjust later to Correct. another resolution. Okay, any further questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, it's a roll call. Oh, yeah, roll call. Jackie Anderson, aye. Ja um, Wayne Moe? Aye. Stephen Smoltz, absent. John Spence? Aye. I declare the resolution is adopted by unanimous vote. Lovely members present. And there's a grant agreement uh, that I will need to sign. Do you have that with you? Okay. All right. Uh, next item is Shields Lake Stormwater Reuse Contract under 7A. Old business. And President Managers, uh, you will recall from um, our last regular board meeting on September 13th that the board had awarded a contract uh, consisting of the base bid and add alternates two, three, and five to address the contracting. At that time, there was still discussion as to um, whether or not we wanted to proceed with uh, some additional add alternates um, that were sought by the Forest Hills Golf Club and that were incorporated into the bidding process. Um, I was then asked to meet with the Forest Hills Golf Club uh, president and I did so along with some of their other staff and, and uh, board members and to ensure that they were not 
asking in particular for any further requests. Um, so I did have the meeting. Um, they were very satisfied with uh, that the district was considering these additional ad alternates and that they had no further requests of the district for the project. Um, I did also convey that the um, district would perhaps be interested in some other unrelated uh, projects with them on, on their property, as well as that depending on the final outcome of the project, um, the board would still uh, still have the um, rain retain the ability to consider asking for some reimbursement of the additional engineering fees. Um, but there was no need for a decision at that particular time, and there was no um, direction to specifically ask for that reimbursement. So that's what I conveyed, though, was that, that the board um, may, depending on the final outcome of the project, still come back and ask for, for some portion or full reimbursement of, of those amounts. So they understood that. Um, and I've conveyed that again uh, by email to the board president uh, for the Four Sales Golf Club. And so at present, it is uh, staff and engineer's recommendation that we would proceed then with adding the additional items as presented in the, in the memo. Um, to adjust the contract that was awarded on September 13th. Okay. Any questions of the board? No. no? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I will move to authorize the district administrator to adjust the contract awarded on September 13th to Dressel Contracting. To incorporate add alternates one, four, and seven, and execute all documents necessary to do so, and increase the contract price to five hundred nineteen thousand three hundred fifty-four dollars and eighty-one cents. I'll second the motion. There's no further comments. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is report of the administrator. Thank you, President. Managers, um, mm -hmm. so just one item that I, um, well, maybe a couple items that I would want to bring up. First, um, I did want to just note uh, regarding that permit that was uh, in today, uh, not actually related to the permit, but, but it brought up a discussion. Um, since the city had contacted the adjoining property owners, a adjoining property owner to the, I think, Northwest had contacted the city and had uh, expressed concern that over the last few years um, there was an increased uh, water level in the property that this individual owned. Some Christmas trees and other things were, were dying. Um, and so the suggestion was that somehow um, or at least the misunderstanding was that somehow we operated a ditch out there and that we were keeping water back. But of course, I clarified that we do not own or manage any ditches, and if anything, the city would really have to determine whether or not that was part of their MS4 conveyance as a part of the city. So, um, so the city staff understood that, and we're going to get back to the, to the property owner. But, um, but it is an area that does drain easterly toward the MnDOT project area, and then which then goes underneath 35 to the Bixby Park project area. Mm. So, um, an additional item also was an email uh, at the beginning of this week on Monday from Manager Smaltz. Uh, so he was uh, he was expressing some concern, and I've handed this. Uh, copy of the email out for the managers um, that so he was concerned about some of these items that were um, taken out of the draft uh, amended budget uh, at that special meeting on the 18th and 
but the managers would recall that what was recommended was to come back with a more precise um, uh, quote for the work needed to be done, particularly in the Castlewood area and the JD6 and a few other things. And so um, following that September 18th meeting, then I had already last week or the week before had already um, met with EOR, I guess last week. And so we worked on two things. One was the, uh, the initial development outline of the tier one, two, and three framework for the board to take a look at. And the other was then to uh, start work on these uh, quotes for services or estimates of what it would take to do further evaluation in some of these project areas for, 2000, for 2019. All of these will be uh, part of the board packet for the October 11th. I think that's a special meeting. I don't think it's a regular meeting. So I so just wanted to make sure the board was aware that there's not a need for a motion to direct us. It was my understanding, and I took the necessary action to start work on that for the October 11th already, so meeting. Uh, the only other thing really is to, to note, of course, is next week we have our alum treatment on Moody Lake. It'll, it'll be occurring, and we do have a, basically an open house uh, Wednesday out on site there at Moody Lake at that uh, the town park there, the, round, uh, the Moody Round Barn uh, Park, and that'll be from 1 to 3 o'clock. It's open to all residents, uh, any citizen that wants to come out and see how an alum treatment is performed. Uh, it'll be all staged and they'll be doing the treatment. So um, barring any bad weather, I guess, we'll, there's always that caveat that it is a weather dependent treatment. So um, otherwise I'm available for questions or anything else that might, is on the administrator's report. The only comment I have, Erin's um, report um, that she provided last month for us in the permitting area, mm -hmm. um, is that going to become a routine monthly report updated? Well, I was not intending it to be, but... Well, it's a very important in piece of information for a board member. Um, and uh, as we saw last time, um, there were just a couple of suggestions that we had to make the information more, um, more, um, what's the word I want to use, digestible. But the amount of building that we've had, the amount of permits, mm -hmm. is very important um, to have uh, documented when we start working on our next 10-year plan. Land use is a big part of update in, in a management plan, and as we can see by these uh, two and almost, what is it now, almost two pages of um, permits. There's a lot of activity going yes. on. And we had asked that she uh, make sure that those were uh, broken down by Lake Management District, which she's reporting here, but she had the chart, the graphic chart, that uh, was very easy to digest all of that information. And so um, I would encourage you to have her prepare that for us okay. and uh, make that part of our uh, regular meeting every every month. Okay, we can do that. I'm assuming it's not an onerous task to do that, right? I mean, well, she's just adding to what she's yeah. done already. She's yeah. got the basis. She's got the information. Yeah. So just charting. Yeah, I'll uh, I, I'll I will inquire as to the yeah. amount of time that's involved. Well, you told yeah. us last time that she knew access, and she's putting all this information into the access database. It's it very is. easy to run reports. The hard part is is creating the database. So pulling the information out uh, is, is and should be. Mm -hmm. I don't know who did the mapping or the graph. Did task. you do that, Jess? No, Aaron did. Aaron did, But okay. that's in GIS. It's not through the access database. So okay. They okay. have to be. They have yeah. to do multiple things, yeah. 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 But, uh, but I hope you understand the importance of it for a board member. When we are uh, trying to keep a handle on all of this stuff that you see every day, um, it's very important that we have it in a Mm -hmm. Readily accessible format. It was a nice layout, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And the only other thing I wanted to comment on, because 
you have it in your um, report. It's also in this one um, document or uh, article that Angie wrote. And that's the information that came out of that St. Croix uh, River cruise. Um, you mentioned it in here. Um, I, I wanted to bring it up last week, but I, I didn't get around to it. But there was a um, document that Angie refers to in her article that came from the research uh, unit uh, out that way. And um, you all need to see it, because that is a great representation of a lot of data in a very easily uh, understandable format. And there was a pie chart uh, that he provided for land use in the St. Croix Valley. Mm -hmm. And uh, Angie's article brings that out too. Uh, agricultural land use is 21% of the St. Croix Valley, but it is 65% of the phosphorus load. And so when they're talking about priority setting in that watershed, Obviously, it's pretty obvious where the attention needs to be directed. And the forest land is a small percentage and uh, actually is a sink for phosphorus. So I think it was around 10% and its phosphorus load was eight. And um, same thing with the grasslands, that's even more of a sink. So that kind of information for our districts is going to be very important as well as we look at the next 10-year uh, long-range plan. I do have that um, handout in the PDF from mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Almendinger from the yeah from the research I mean, lab, and I do have a meeting set up with him good. on Tuesday. Good. Will you make sure that all the board members receive that? Sure. Thank you. Next is um, EOR. We're going to do the minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. There was one more thing. The minutes. We talked about Steve's. Um, I just have a couple of things here. Um, the ninth meeting where I wasn't there, so you guys will have to address that. The 14th, I think I have a note here on the last page, page 4. Um, I just wanted it noted that uh, in the information that I handed out for the budget, I also had a uh, proposal, which was a balanced budget at the 2.593593 level, and that should be added in that first full paragraph on that page somewhere. On the 14th? Uh, no, no, on, on the 9th. Okay. On the 9th when, did you say you were not at the 9th meeting? Well, not at the beginning. Oh, I came okay. in late, so yeah. So this was on, this is on page 5 it starts, but it uh, talked about the, uh, the, you had concerns about the sedimentation rates for Comfort Lake and Little Comfort Lake, mm -hmm. and that they were higher than any other that sedimentation rates were higher than any other lake in the district, and that is not true. Um, so I'm not sure how to clarify it. I know you said it, but it's not true. Um, and, I mean, there's evidence it's not true. It, if I look back at the, when they gave us the, the core sample analysis, First of all, we don't have sedimentation rates for bone or comfort because we haven't done any uh, core sample analysis yet, so we don't know what the sedimentation rates are for those, but under the section on Comfort Lake in the October 5th, 2017 minutes when Dr. Edlin gave us the presentation, he said the sedimentation rate for Comfort Lake resembles those of Shields and Moody Lakes. And then it goes on to say, however, though the sedimentation rates have been decreasing in recent years. They are still three times higher than pre-European pre settlement. But uh, Shields Lake is actually five times higher than pre-European settlement. But it did say that all of them were similar. So anyway, that statement's not is not correct. But not according to our annual reports, and that's what I was looking at. 
Well, the annual so, report. So total was, suspended oh. solids, and maybe I'm using those terms interchangeably, but total suspended solids are what, it, what are coming into the lakes, and that's what's measured in our annual reports. Right, but and we don't measure the all the inlets into all the lakes. Those are just the inlets that are measured on Comfort Lake. There's at least six inlets on the Bone Lake, at least. And so we aren't, those are measured samples. Well, well I did say it, and I did give the uh, supporting documentation for it. So this is a reflection of what was said at that meeting. If you want to challenge the veracity well, of it. Well, I want to challenge the accuracy of it. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, and then on. Uh, then what I would ask you to do, and I think what would be appropriate, is that you submit a um, document that can be added to the minutes. Well, I've got this document right here that states that pretty much states what the core samples show. Well, that for bone and comfort, that's this is no. We haven't done bone, samples. right? This is Dr. Edlin's yeah. report yep. from uh, from the core sample analysis, and he said all the all the sedimentation rates were similar. Right, for the three lakes we did cores on. Huh? For the three lakes we did cores on. Right, and we don't have any. We don't have anything for analysis bone. for Bone Lake or right. Forest Lake. Right, and we don't have all the data to prove that. Uh, I mean, the sedimentation rates for Forest Lake, if we did core samples, they could be five times higher than pre-settlement or ten times higher. We don't know right. what the sedimentation rate is. So you're going off the sedimentation rates as measured by the core samples as opposed to the flow into the lake. Well, the flow into the lake, I, I know what Jackie's referen right. referencing there. She's right. what the inlets show. But we aren't measuring all the inlets of Bone Lake or Forest Lake. Um, so we don't know what it is in those lakes as you're. Right. But of the lakes that we are measuring, Comfort has a higher inflow rate of suspended it solids. It may have a higher inflow rate, but of even, suspended if sedimentation, mm -hmm. even if the sedimentation is higher, it may have always been higher, even pre settlement. Right. So that's all I'm stating is that. Um, we don't have enough data to, to make that comment, and in the, in the August 23rd meeting minutes towards the end, I don't know if staff found out, but um, uh, you had said that at another meeting that, that Little Comfort Lake and Comfort Lake, this is on page Eight at the bottom it says uh, the little Comfort Lake and Comfort Lake have ten times the suspended solids loading compared to other lakes, and like I said, there's there's no evidence of that. Well, if you're looking at suspended solids, it's actually compared to Bone Lakes Inlet that yeah, we well, measure. We're only measuring one. Well, it's, it's well, the inlet. Our to annual the, report, it only shows the, the inlet that we monitor. For the Sunrise River coming in through the Bonelet Inlet. That's what they're measuring, is the Sunrise River. And that's the same thing that's being measured on Comfort. Not the same trail, that's Little Comfort's inlet. Well, but there are other inlets into Bone Lake. Right, there's other inlets, there's, and there's inlets we don't monitor on Forest Lake. There's tons of inlets we don't monitor on But Forest. of the inlets that we're measuring, that rate on Comfort and Little Comfort is higher. Actually, it's 40 times higher because it's 5,000 some odd pounds of suspended solids coming into Bone Lake. And right, it's, 100, it's 120, excuse me, it's 240,000 pounds coming that's, into comfort. That's not what it says in your statement. No, I know. It says 10, much lower. No. It, it. All right, let's see. I don't know what we're... Madam President, managers, um, I think one of the things on for our October 11th meeting, um, we can also prepare an additional summary of both the sediment rate as well as the sedimentation rate discussion um, and try to help address yeah, some of this that's, so that's fine but I, I mean you're pushing a narrative about sediments there's it's been listed in all three of these minutes uh, put pushing some kind of false narrative that 
that Comfort Lake is taking all this sediment more so than any other lakes. And Comfort Lake, because of the core sample analysis, show that it's decreased 58% from the 1990s to now. And it should decrease more now that we've got Bixby Park done. So that's the only point I'm making. And I don't know, uh, I'm not disagreeing that you said these things. I'm just dis disagreeing with the accuracy of it. And I'm not sure, um, I'll, I'll approve the minutes if we can put a, some kind of documentation that they're not necessarily accurate. Well, I think, um, Madam President and Managers, the August 9th minutes are drafted as presented, so we're really reflecting what was stated. Um, I do have one request from Manager Schmaltz uh, to be added, and I've, uh, I think I'll just have Jessica pull it up um, versus trying to read it uh, verbatim. But any correction to the minutes really is just done according to what you've just completed, and that is having a discussion about it, and then this will be incorporated into this evening's uh, board minutes to follow. So there was also the um, <clears throat> matter of the July 26th meeting, and I apologize for not bringing, uh, bringing this back uh, to this board meeting, um, but those were held open at the last August 23rd meeting, um, and I was going to review just the accuracy of what was stated, not necessarily try to interpret one way or the other as to the, um, the accuracy of <clears throat> the statement itself. So you may recall, Manager Mo, you would ask, excuse me for that, <clears throat> for those meetings to be, to be uh, held open. And yeah, I, I guess what I don't want to see, I don't want to see um, things being said at meetings that that aren't accurate and then going into the meeting as you know or, or into the minutes as a matter of record like it's fact well it's attributed to me and so i think if you want to have a uh, if you want to have a, a statement that's different than that or challenging the veracity of that statement well i guess it, you, this, you can you can put an addendum to the minutes you can do that at any time okay yeah, I guess so. So why don't you prepare what you want to do? Am I incorrect in that? Um, <clears throat> Madam Chair and mm -hmm. board members, what I, what I would say is there's, there's a definite distinction. There's the, the substance of the issue mm -hmm. that is important for you to discuss as it's relevant to your setting of your goals and identifying your projects and, and so forth. But then the question of the minutes is when you vote on the minutes and changes to it, you're simply voting on <clears throat> is this an accurate representation of what was mm -hmm. said? <clears throat> yes. I, so, so it is an accurate representation of what was said. Right. And, and so you may want to, if, if something is said that is one manager's representation and another manager disagrees, with it, it would be appropriate for the minutes to be clear that it's th that a manager indicated or suggested such and so. Um, you could you could question it also and have your question if it appear in the minutes, um, or it's simply something that then you can can become a a subsequent agenda item, or you know tonight when the minutes are approved. The minutes for this meeting will reflect okay. that issue was taken, but I'm not sure the notion of okay. an addendum on minutes with different people taking issue could I could see that becoming what? sort of Are, so. Th what what was discussed the tonight then will be in the minutes for tonight. For this meeting. All right. Well, I think I think you said something though that that was better said than than I did, and that is what page was that on eight again on the. Uh, which one are you looking for? The, the one that you were just questioning. Was that no, on, was the just questioning. It was on the 23rd? on the 23rd, and it's uh, page on, on page 8 on the bottom under consent agenda. That okay. If there was a, um, if there was a counter 
that you stated at that meeting. You were at that meeting, right? Yeah, you were. Then, then I would have uh, whoever listens to the tape go back to the tape, and if there was a counter statement by Manager Mo, then make sure that that appears in these minutes as well. Otherwise, I think what Chuck just said is, is appropriate then, is that the discussion was here tonight, and so it will be reflected in the minutes for tonight. But I, but I would I would look at that tape first. I, I think the question is captured here, though, in the, in the comment, because there's the comment that you made, and then there's the comment that Manager Mo requested that the staff fact check the statement. And it sounds like we're going to hear more about that at the October 11th meeting. Mm -hmm. So I think that's accurate, and that's going to happen, and that reflects what was discussed at, at my recollection of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well, I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, Unless anybody else has anything else to add to approve the uh, meeting minutes for Thursday, August 9th, Tuesday, August 14th, and Thursday, August 23rd, 2018. With the changes that were discussed. Right? Yeah, yeah the, the only comment I will make then is that this is the revision of the minutes for What was this a revision from? Mm, that's just minutes, I think. No, no, this was. It's this the consent was. agenda. This is. Yeah. Oh, I see what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know this, what this minutes that was, the July 9th minutes. Well, oh, the, here we go. Uh, July 12th. It was the well. July 12th minutes. Make sure in the July 12th minutes that uh, Manager Moe's counter statement is, in, is captured in those July 12th minutes. Mm -hmm. And if you can just provide us with that. Uh, transcript of where, his comments. Where are you seeing this now? On this, top of page nine. The consent agenda. These were the about changes to, to, to previous prior, minutes. prior minutes. Yeah. And so your comment should have been captured on the July 12th minutes. Right. And then if you bring those to the next meeting, then we can open up those minutes and and make sure that that statement is in there. His statement. Are you following that? Okay. It says here that it was done. Are you, Wayne? Um, it's right on the top of page nine, right here. We were we were talking about the minutes from July 12th, so your comments should have been in that. Okay. In that well, set of minutes. Well, and I but I think this here, um, when when you said the that. Um, but, but when you made this statement that that I. Uh, you had said at a previous meeting mm -hmm. uh, that that what you said at this previous meeting actually was in the August 9th. Should have been at the 12th, was it? Yeah, I mean, you, you thought it was at an earlier meeting, but it was actually at this meeting, and there was reference to sediment rates mm -hmm. on page 5. But um, in this meeting, you said, well, I said at this meeting this, and it's not in there, but it was actually on this meeting. August 9th? August 9th. August 9th right. meeting. Right, but it was also in previous meetings in July. That's, that's what, this, this statement was for a previous uh, meeting in July. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't recall that. But. Well, it's right here. I mean, it's. These are all the changes know, for those previous minutes. I know you're making changes to minutes, but that was by your recollection that you said, I said this at this meeting, and it's not in the minutes. July 12th? Yeah. When we had this conversation here mm -hmm. on the 23rd, it was because you said, I said this at this meeting, and I don't see it in the minutes. And so I made comment that that's not... That's not true, but you did say in the August 9th meeting, you did bring up sedimentation rates, and, mm -hmm. and that was the meeting that you were recalling from an earlier meeting. So, but anyway, so these are this is what's said at the meeting. So. Yes. Mike? I know there's been, um, I think, a motion and a second, but I do want to... Um, make note that Manager Smaltz had sent uh, these uh, 
adjustments to the meeting because he was at that meeting. Um, this particular point, and so it's for August 9th. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look the other up for approval, yeah. September 11th isn't okay. up for approval yet, so it's only August 9th. Right, so the August 9th, if we're, if we're looking at page 5, under the budget, old business budget discussion, halfway through the second paragraph, um, he's asking that under the where it starts, there was discussion about water quality trends and data, which guides setting of long-term goals uh, to add. Manager Small stated that if only one or two water quality data points are added below the long-term water quality 2030-2040 goals, it does not statistically qualify as meeting the goals. Um, and then goes on from there. And um, so um, we could go back and get their verbatim, but it was very close to that. You know. And it wasn't reflected in the August 9th meeting? Minutes? We did not include it initially, no. And what's, what, in the draft version, we did not include it, but he did make a comment along that line, and we could get the verbatim language off the recording if Okay. But this is. Well, I will make a motion to approve the meeting minutes. Um, and you can go back and find, find uh, what Manager Smalls is talking about that's not incorporated in these minutes mm -hmm. and put it in if everybody else is in agreement. I'll, I'll second. Okay, so it's the previous motion with the addition of um, staff capturing Manager Smoltz's narrative on that particular topic for, for August, August 9th. 9th. Yep. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, you are. Ten resident managers. Uh, I think a couple of things I wanted to note um, is just in terms of the project effectiveness monitoring and our you know feasibility site scattered throughout the district. Uh, we did sample on the 21st. I think this went out the day before, but we knew the rain was coming, so we did go out. Um, actually, Mike Majeski was out Thursday night, right after the storm at a few of the sites that he really wanted to see how they responded to the what ended up being five in the rainfall. Um, and then also some of the other work we've been doing in the JD6 in terms of survey work, um, we've been collecting samples from the wetland hydrometers that we have. We have about 10 to 12, I can't recall how many we put in Hayward and JD6. Um, and then uh, other work is just coordinating on a lot of the projects. Uh, there was a meeting about the wetland sea outlet design in Moody. The elm treatment is happening next week, so we've been coordinating with HAB, as Mike said. Um, I think that's all. No, you had a memo on shield, so that's the update. Okay. Smith Partners. Nothing, Madam Chair. Okay. Report of Treasurer. All right, you have the Treasurer's report in the packet. Uh, we had income for the period of $19,924.03. We have expenses of $164,205.36. I would ask that you approve the Treasurer's report and approve paying the bills. I'll make that motion. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 She carries. Report of officers and managers. Wayne? Um, to, uh, well, actually, I texted her, but uh, Jen Oknick, or Oknick, however it's pronounced, but she had her interview with the county board and thought it went well. Um, I did meet with her like a week prior to her meeting because she wanted to kind of kind of know what was going on in the watershed and. She wanted as much information as she could get. She seems very, very intelligent um, about water issues, so um, hopefully she'll get approved. Uh, cool. She brought up something about she was going over invasive species, and she brought up, well, in fact, there was something in her packet 
this week about, about it, but about, I don't know how it's pronounced, Phragmites maybe? No, yeah. Phragmites. Phragmites. She goes, what about that? I haven't seen any of you guys address that at all. And I said, I don't even know what that is. You haven't even heard and about so, it. And so anyway, she said, well, there's some right around Bone Lake. And I, I said, well, what does it look like? And she showed me a picture. Well, right away, I knew where she was talking about. I said, that's over on Meadowbrook, isn't it? And, and there's like, on Meadowbrook, there's an area you go down the hill and it's lowlands there. And there's these big, tall, towering plants, just huge plants. And I said, I know right where you're talking about. So, so there is some in our district. Wow. So. But anyway, that's all I have. Any timetable? Did she know when they, she was going to hear? Uh, I think she thought she'd find out in the next week or so. Okay. okay. All right. John? Uh, I'm still waiting to hear from Chisago County. I haven't heard anything about my status yet. So as far as I know, I was going to be reappointed. But um, apparently it was on the uh, consent agenda on the September 5th agenda and it was in the minutes as being approved the consent agenda was approved but no name was by the uh, appointment it was a committee appointment to the comfort lake forest lake watershed board and that was all it said <laughs> so somebody's been appointed apparently <laughs> we don't know who yet if it's not you you shouldn't be sitting here i i have yeah that's all it says in the minutes that the consent agenda was adopted so no one's told me differently, right? So I'm here for life until someone tells me different. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Um, the only thing I have are questions of staff, and we can address this maybe by looking at some maps. But I noticed um, on Pioneer Road that the road project from Wyoming City is installing curb and gutter. Are we aware of that? I mean, it's right by Sunrise River. You know, there's a house between the road and the sunrise. That's right where it meets 23, or 22, excuse me. So I was not aware that we were going to have curb and gutter out in the country like that. And it looks like it might even uh, go around. They haven't put that up yet, but they're, they're preparing the road as if they're going to be putting curb and gutter on 260th going to the access. There is gutter at the other end of two, uh, West Comfort Drive intersection with 260th, yep. there's curb and gutter there? there. Okay, so they're going to come all the way down that road with curb and gutter. Was well, that on the, was that on the I, plans? They were going to improve Pioneer, but I didn't know that meant curb and gutter. I was surprised yeah. too. Yeah. I think it's on a section there, Greg, right? Not all of it. I'll need to, yeah, I'll need to look at a, a map, but my recollection was there was going to be curb and gutter in the section that's actually not in the district. Mm -hmm. um, but what? the sections that are in the district, I thought were going to be remain rural section. I'll yeah. go back and look at the plans. Well, if you could, uh, Manager Smith, Spence, I'm sure that you would like to see that as well. If, if uh, we can come in and take a look at those uh, drawings and the submittals, because that was a big surprise to me. Yeah. I, I I wasn't expecting it. In fact, I thought 260th was just going to be uh, mm -hmm. uh, repaved, yeah. not, not actually changed. Well, it's very expensive to put it in, and I'm, I'm not sure what the value is uh, in a rural area where you have ditches that, that do a much better job of filtering the water before it hits surface water, the lakes. Do they put curb cuts in it to drive it to, into the ditches then? They must. They have well, to. That's what they're... Doing, but so you're saying all of Pioneer they're putting curb and gutter on? I haven't been down the length of Pioneer. I just was surprised to see it at 260th and West Comfort Drive. That was the area that I first saw it, and I didn't expect 260th to get anything, yeah. any treatment no. at all. No. And then I see the way they're grading Pioneer at Iris End, they're grading it for curb and gutter. Yeah. You can tell they're preparing it yeah. for that. The curb and gutter right now is as you turn off of 22. Wyoming Trail onto Pioneer Road. And so, so they are putting it in up right. there. And so it's already um, probably, I would say, maybe, um, maybe a quarter of a mile already has curb and gutter. And it looks like the rest is going to be 
hmm. at it as well. It's quite a surprise. Yeah, if you keep going a little bit to the right there, Jessica, and then down. Oh, oh sorry, other direction, sorry. Um, farther, farther up. Where the outlet is. On right top there, there. Mm -hmm. right at that intersection. Pioneer and Wyoming, Wyoming Trail and Pioneer. There That's is. where they're starting the curb and gutter, apparently. I haven't actually been by there recently, but the other day, mm -hmm. I could tell they were getting it ready to start some work in that. Yeah, I, do, I do recall they were going to put curb and gutter on that section of Pioneer Road, okay. which is not in the district. It flows the to the way. north. What I don't remember is that 260th. Um, Pioneer Road is not in the district? Not that northern portion, no. Okay. Because the district starts basically at the outlet under 260th. Okay. So. That's where it ends, the district ends? Right. Okay. Yep. So for sure that northern part of Pioneer, what I can't remember if 260th was considered in or out. Mm. That might have been considered out as well because I think that flows up to the Sunrise River there. Yeah. That, that would make sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, there you go. So, oh, so uh, yeah, I think two. I think two sixtieth is the boundary. Yeah, two sixtieth is the boundary. But my recollection is all that road flows to the to the river and not to the lake. Okay. So oh, I think half of it flows toward Comfort though, because <laughs> the road has a crown on it, and so there there would be no way that that south side would would flow to the river. So they're just gonna put curb on the one side. I don't. I, that road is not curved that way. John, is it? I don't recall it being curved that way. It's not. It's not prepared that way for no. the new uh, asphalt. No, it was. In, in order for in order for that to go into the sunrise like that, it would have to be tilted, right. and it's not. Well, or it goes into a ditch, and then there's a culvert that goes that back, comes underneath. back underneath. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's true too. Could be collected all so, on the one side, mm -hmm. and then. So I'll I'll pull up the plans. Yeah, and will you take a look at it? But all the all the rest of Pioneer, mm -hmm. my recollection was that was all supposed to be rural section. So if they're putting curb on that, then that's not what we approved, I don't think. It sure looks like the way they're grading down at Pioneer and Iris, they're grading it, but they could be just grading it wide enough, because they were going to widen it. I know they were widening Pioneer, but it sure looks like they're going to put I, it. was already at, at uh, standard. I don't think that they No, were. they were upgrading the road. They're upgrading it so they could, because they can only have five ton trucks on it in the in the spring, so they they actually changed that road, right? Yeah, they were they were doing some widening to meet whatever standards. Yeah, there was a different have. standard that they and were. And they were applying. putting um, ditches with checks and under drains for treatment um, throughout that section. I saw that construction, and those those are very deep ditches that they're putting alongside. Yeah, so that's what that is. Okay, and then the so you'll prepare that information and let John and I know. So we can come in and take a look at it. Yes. Um, the other two things, I, I've told Mike Kenny about this, but um, there were two culverts on the Highway 8 project that I did not realize were there. There's a lot of them. Uh, but these are pretty deep ones, and um, I just wanted to make sure that uh, Mike or, or EOR, when you're up in this area, took a look at them. And um, one is just um, west of the county ditch where it comes out from North Shore Trail and goes over to uh, that storage unit building. And then about, um, it's probably maybe about uh, half a block uh, up is where it looks like it feeds into the county line ditch. But that's a really deep one, and that was open for quite some time and was catching a lot of rain. So it's, it's probably a good eight feet deep, I would think, right there. And the other one was uh, just um, east of what used to be Iris Avenue's exit onto 8. And it's coming from the agricultural uh, field and under Highway 8 over into Little Comfort. And so that looked like a pretty big one as well. They had a pretty big culvert there. The other one was concrete. Uh, this one, I think, was corrugated, but it was a good size. So, and that doesn't have a lot of treatment area. I don't know where that exit, if it's exits, if it's directly into the lake or if it's into a wetland. But if those two things can be looked at. Um, and then uh, I was just commenting before uh, most people arrived to, to a couple of folks here that um, the Highway 8 project uh, was a very big project. Number of weeks, number of culverts, 
obviously affected that entire stretch of Highway 8. And it was really well done. And the um, cleanup uh, process was uh, really excellent. Um, they had covered with straw and, and seed blankets uh, when they were done with each culvert area. Um, so there was very little, if any, uh, release of sediment along that whole ditch system into both little and big comfort. Um, so uh, with the board's permission, I would like to uh, write a, a letter, do a draft letter to um, DOT and Myers Construction, who was the subcontractor for that project, and just uh, compliment them on behalf of the Watershed District for doing such a phenomenal job with BMPs. And because of the amount of traffic that Highway 8 carries every day, uh, it was certainly a very good educational uh, opportunity for everyone to see how projects should be done. You need a motion or just general consensus? No, just general or consensus. That's fine. Yeah, that sounds good. Yes, Mike? On the two culverts, um, so I'm familiar with, with both of them, the one at the county line. Actually, I had investigated her earlier in the summer, um, had alerted the county that, um, and the city that there was a, somewhere along the line, somebody had knocked over a sign and there was that blockage that was occurring there. The city had actually gone out, they had hired Olson Sewer to go and, and clean out some of that on the west side of that, mm. is it good view that is on the west side of it there? Right. Um, so they had, they had already, done some of that, but um, so we're aware that there was the other culvert then just upstream as you were describing. Um, so, I mean, I can, I can certainly get staff or have um, the engineer look at them as well, but I'm not sure what else other than just look, making note of them. I mean, is there a particular request or? No, it, it was just for, um, you're not going to see them exposed like this. Oh, I see. It's going sure. to be covered fairly soon. Right. And these were two that I did not know about okay. and probably would have no way of knowing because if it's coming into the ditch system and then going, uh, exiting through the county line ditch right along that storage unit building, you wouldn't know where it's coming from. Right, it's a problem with um, a few of these, including even the one under 61. Most of that box culvert is underwater most of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, the elevations and the hydrology of if the hydrology has changed and the elevations of the, of the culverts have remained the same. So yes, you would not normally see that because of the vegetation and yeah. the fact that most of it's underwater most of the time. Now our, our permit crew, of course, I, I'm assuming knows that very well, but I just, uh, it, it, there's not an opportunity like this. I mean, it's been 50 years, I think, since the culverts were replaced under Highway 8. So um, just for um, educational purposes, um, I think that it's worthwhile to have our engineers when they're in the area, not a special trip, but just for observation purposes. It would be a good time to go out and actually photograph yeah. all of them that are being worked yeah. on because they're, they're all cleaned out around it and yeah. right, they're all fresh and yeah, exactly. they won't look like this again. They won't look no. like this again. No. 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 Not any time soon. Okay. Um, summary and approval of board direction. I don't think there's anything new there, so I don't think there's... Is there anything that you wanted to add, Mike? No, ma'am. Okay. And we're ready to I'll make start. a motion that we adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yay. We're adjourned.